in a world dominated by chrome and paint. Don't be a bitch and rust that shit away. Don't let oxide chap your hide. It's time to hammer down on rust. Get rid of that crust. Don't let rust blow a hole in your crust minus C equals rust. Don't let rust destroy your sick bobber. Hammer down today. More, more. Don't be a bitch, throw rust in a ditch. Rust will never win. Final nail in the coffin, kids. All right, I'm done. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, sit down, grab a cozy blanket, your favorite alcoholic beverage, and perhaps some amyl nitrate. So today we're gonna show you how to properly line your gas tank. Rust is stupid, much like your mom. It is a combination of hydrous ion oxide and iron oxide hydroxide. And it basically eats the living shit out of everything that's metal. So if you're really interested in the science BS of this, you can look all this up online and really go down a rabbit hole and figure out what rust does to things. Now I know you're thinking, why the fuck does that fucking matter? I never even look inside my gas tank. No one sees it, right? Most beautiful motorcycle ever. No one's looking inside the gas tank until you start pissing gas all over the place and you catch on fire and your sack is chestnuts roasting. Not fun. Today we're gonna use a TJ Brutal Customs VT600 gas tank. These are backed by our lifetime warranty and they're sexy as fuck. Let's get started. <sighs> we're gonna open this box with a special box cutter and uh, we have some fizz hair on it. Perfect. Super sharp. Let's get started. Never cut towards yourself. Always cut towards a friend or a loved one. Unfortunately, there's nobody here I love and no friends, so I'm just cutting away in every direction I want. Oh, ooh, yeah. Look at that. You know, the best kind of a knife for precise work like this is something very long that you can't control well. Excellent. Excellent tool. So when you get a box like this with a gas tank in it, it's gonna be nicely padded. There's gonna be a pack of fun stuff here. This is going to include some hose, some brass barb fittings, and our TJ Brutal Customs vented gas cap. Oh, what's that? <laughs> All right. Now, before I pull this plastic off, I wanna show you guys something very interesting. If you look at the surface of the tank, you kinda of see the plastic sticking to it. That's because this tank is covered in some grease. What that grease does is prevents the tank from rusting. As we said earlier, rust is stupid. There's also gonna be a silica gel packet inside here. Don't eat it, don't let your dogs eat it. Uh, it may look like a bunch of fun candy, I promise you it's not. Now, before I pull this out, I am going to protect my hands because industrial dermatitis is a bitch. That's like rust on the skin. Our next step is going to be to get the oil off the outside of the tank so we don't have to wear gloves all day long. Now, if you are a sweaty motherfucker, you gotta be careful. Your hands can add rust to the material. Salt in your sweat, moisture, air, all great environments for rust to develop. So I do this because I don't wanna have to put gloves on every 15 minutes while I'm getting the, uh, the liner to cure. That's it, just rub it down real nice. I had a lot of practice doing this when I was working in Vegas for Thunder Down Under, except I was applying baby oil, not removing oil. There's no acetone involved. Same concept though, really. Okie dokie. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna clean the inside of the tank. Very important because there can be dust, shavings, grease inside that's gonna make your lining job come out like ass if you just leave it in there. So what we do is we take some of these little eighth inch NPT plugs, super cheap, you can get them at Ace Hardware or Home Depot, and we're gonna plug up all the eighth inch bungs on the side of the tank. Just like that. Tune in Tokyo. Everything reminds me of her. This one didn't go in as far as I'd like, so I'm just gonna snug it down a bit, beat the shit out of the tank while I'm at it. There we go, now it's tight. All right, so I'm gonna get a flashlight and take a peek inside, see what I find. So the treasures, oh yeah, a lot of grease. That's good, no rust, fantastic. All right. So now I'm gonna take acetone and spray a bunch of this shit in here. Now, if I take a look again, what's likely gonna be in there at the very bottom is all those shavings, all my acetone, all the caca that I have purged from the sides of this tank. I still see some stuff I wanna remove. I'm just gonna let the acetone do its job. Yeah. Let's take another look-see. All right, I feel better about that. Now we're gonna drain all this nasty acetone, all the crap we've collected, into a bucket. Mmm, it's a fine vintage. Hints of elderberry, touch of wood smoke, bubblegum curry. 
That's what I'm getting. All right. Save that for later. Take a look inside again. Make sure we've gotten everything out. All right, I still see some very tiny little metal chips. Didn't quite make their way out. So I have a magnet, a little extendo magnet. I'm gonna take this and wipe it around in there. I'm gonna grab any metal chips that are floating around. There we go. Let's see, we got a few little pieces and some dust out of there. Not a ton, but it's good to get it all out. Take a look again, see what's inside. Oh, that looks beautiful now. Super clean, super fresh, much like a freshly shorn scrotum. All right, now you can take these guys out because we're gonna dry it. Just gonna get some compressed air. If you don't have a compressor, those little dust off bottles will work just fine. Now the reason I use acetone, because the liner I'm gonna use is acetone base. If there's any acetone residue in here, it's not gonna affect the liner. It's actually going to thin the liner a little bit and eventually that acetone gasses out and the liner is allowed to cure. Don't use MEK, don't use something else, something else only acetone. If you use red coat, which is what we're gonna be using today. Now I'm just checking for any extra moisture that might be in here. Any acetone puddles, maybe there, no. Get it all out. Looks good. On to the fun part. We get our plug, put these back in. There we go, beautifluous. Gloves are coming off because we're done with the acetone and the grease. Now we use some tape. So I'm just masking off the top part of the tank here to protect it from the liner. Now, if your tank is already painted, that's okay because you can tape off the whole tank to protect it from liner, which is what I would recommend if it's already painted. In this case, the tank is not painted and red coat's very easy to remove with some acetone, comes off your hands. I use IC hand cleaner on my hands. It gets off pretty much everything here in the shop without being really abrasive to my skin. So if you get a close look here, you can see how I'm getting up close to the threads on the cap. Excuse me, threads on the filler, not the cap. Get a nice seal. Now that's done, we're gonna open up our red coat. Get our fancy funnel here. Now when you do this, you should be in a very well ventilated area. Don't do it in a closet. Uh, if you got a tiny garage on a hot summer day, you're gonna get real fucking high and lose some brain cells. Not the good kind of high, it's gonna be like a toxic kind of high. Something I like to do to my red coat can is I take a little bit of tape and I will tape off this area. I'm taping off the channel on the outside of the can because some red coat will likely get in there, but if I can keep most of it out, you end up losing a little bit in this channel where the lid sits into, and this is just the simplest way I've found to keep that from happening. There may be better ways to do it, better methods, but this is just how I do it. Now we pour. Pour about half the can, get you a paper towel, let that excess drip off. There we go. Set that aside, I'm gonna set the lid over the top, not seal it. Take our funnel, wipe any excess out of the funnel, set this aside. And now, so let's get the camera out. This is quality Oiwak. See right there, Oiwak. So you know it's like top of the line. You can see that lining is in the bottom of the tank. You see the raw wall and the bottom has all the lining on it. So our goal is to get this lining all over the rest of the tank. Point down the bottom here, you can see my light reflecting out of the pool. I do this, probably see the pool go back. See there's the edge of the pool as I'm tipping the tank. So the point of this, take all the red coat on the sides, or on the bottom, that big pool, and make sure it covers every surface inside so there's no edges. And when I shine my flashlight in here and look, that's what I'm seeing. I'm looking for any blank spots where the the lining has not covered the steel. So let's get started. The little funny camera I have is not necessary to do this. I'm using that to show you guys what it looks like inside, what I'm gonna see with my little flashlight. Just get a little pen light, super easy, and you're gonna watch inside and make sure that lining touches everything. What's nice about Red Coat is that it's pretty easy to see any exposed metal when you use a flashlight because the Red Coat is covering the steel you will see either just a slight reflection or almost nothing at all. So you can really easily spot any exposed steel in here. If you wanna get crazy with this, you can get a mirror and check inside after the next step. Oh, that's looking great. All right, got a little red coat on my flashlight. This thing will never rust. Now we're gonna tape the top and this part needs to be quick because what will happen is the vapors will push their way out of the tape and we don't want that to happen. So I'm gonna do this. Roll it this way. 
Now this motion is getting the red coat all over the top of the tank, being this part. Just roll it around. Okay, now I'm gonna cap it up completely for just a few moments to finish lining this part of the tank. Now we have to be quick about this. Once I seal it, we're going. And if you use blue tape, you'll be able to see the red coat hit that blue tape. It's gonna darken pretty fast. That's about all it takes. There we go. You can see here, a little bit of red coat already tried to get through because the vapors are pushing out. Now the reason we don't spend so much time getting this whole area covered is because what we're about to do is gonna ensure that it's completely covered. We're gonna drain any excess red coat. So now we're gonna take our can and we're gonna drain the excess out of the tank. So you tip your tank up, I let it sit for a minute and you're gonna see the red coat start coming out. Tip it to the sides, back and forth. You can see it's coming out in waves as I tip. Don't be stingy with the stuff. When you're gonna line a tank, pour half that can in there. It's gonna make your lining process much easier. Yes, you have to drain most of it out, but it'll ensure that you really coat the inside properly. As a good friend of mine always says, trust the process. I'm gonna sit it up for a minute, let more drain down to the front of the tank. Ideally, you're gonna to wanna to start this project in the morning. It takes nine hours to cure, and depending on temperature and humidity, wherever you're at, and you wanna make sure that you don't have any puddles. And you guys are gonna get to see that I do have to babysit this for a while after I have, I'm done draining any excess uh, lining out. So you don't wanna just do it and then go off and fuck around with your friends. You need to actually babysit the fucker. You can see I'm still getting a considerable amount of lining out as I'm letting it drain to the front of the tank. And it's starting to slow down how much is coming out. Again, you can see why we taped off the filler and the top of the tank because some of this stuff does get out I'm gonna get those drips off and continue draining this. Let it sit vertically again for just a moment. Lately people have asked why I don't offer tank lining anymore and this is why. Because I really can't do much else with my day except line a tank. So we thought, give a man a fish, he day fish. Pull, give him fishing time, all for eat. I think that's how it goes. Power to the people, you know, all that stuff. So we're still getting quite a bit of lining out of here. Now we don't wanna get all of it out. So I'm pretty satisfied with where we're at. I'm going to wipe the filler off, spin it like that. And you can see how little I've messed up the paint, the, the tape here. Now we can take our can of red coat, pull the tape off carefully, carefully, and we'll throw that away. And now, we are gonna get some paper towels and clean this bunghole. When you clean this, you're gonna to wanna to go from right to left, counterclockwise, like you're unscrewing a cap because you're drawing the red coat up and onto your towel. That's what I do. You can go the other way too, but I find that if there's any little bits of towel or something get stuck, they get pulled out. Now, after you've wiped out any excess from the threads of the filler, I like to take the gas cap and run through the threads. If you have a thread file, you can do this too, but you can use the included gas cap, no problem. So now I'll get my flashlight and we'll take a look at how much of a puddle we have left inside. All right, we've got about a quarter of a cup in there, I'd say. So now my job is going to be rolling this tank around like a complete buffoon and watching the red coat move inside. Most important part is the seam of the tank bottom and the shell. So that is the most important thing to coat when you're lining these tanks. And you can see it, when you put a flashlight in here, it's pretty easy to see what's being coated and what's not. You can see the bungs from here, whoo, that's powerful stuff. I'm making sure I get the red coat all around the bungs. There's already a light red lining on everything in here, but right now, I'm moving the pool of lining all around the inside of this tank. As you do this process, the red coat's gonna move slower and slower and slower as it gets thicker. What you don't wanna do is let a pool sit and harden because it will form a kind of rind over the top of the pool, sealing that puddle of red coat so the inside remains gooey and sticky, much like a jelly donut. That's not what you want, because then what will happen is you think the tank's lying, you don't see anything moving around anymore, but there's this bubble holding a whole lake of red coat. Now when you ride your bike, it vibrates, it's gonna rip open, and that liquid red coat's just gonna get into your gas. Now, thankfully, it can't hurt your engine, it's not gonna hurt the gas, it may not run as well, but it's not gonna hurt anything. However, you are now gonna have a whole patch inside your tank that is exposed, where the red coat is not cured over the metal. What's great about red coat is it's not a hard lining. It's not like a crispy, 
flaky stuff. It's a stretchy polymer. And that stuff, if you ever get it out of a tank, it's hard. It's like rock hard and crusty and it snaps off. So on a motorcycle, you got vibration, that's no good. That's just gonna fall apart, which it did, which is why I don't use that stuff anymore. I use Redco. Now we'll do a time lapse and show you guys what it's like to babysit a tank while you're lining. What I'm doing right now is I'm allowing the red coat to pool in one area for a few minutes, and then I'm gonna take a look and move that pool around again. So I can take a look-see here. It's all pooled up down here at the bottom. So now I'll do this number. We'll rotate it around to the front of the tank and let it sit over here. So you may wanna put a movie on, get a laser pointer, watch your cat play, whatever you wanna do, but you gotta hang out with the tank for a while. All right, folks, if you are looking for a really good video on how to paint your tank, your fender, any other motorcycle parts, check out our video, How to Paint Motorcycle Parts Like a Pro. Just click the link in the description, make sure to like and subscribe, and check out the video. So if you get a longer one, you can swing from buildings like Indiana Jones. Once you have confirmed there is no more liquid red coat inside of the tank, it's all dried up, nice and cured. I like to let the tank sit for at least 24, 48 hours before I put any gas in. If you can smell the red coat really strong, give it some more time. Something that helps is put a fan nearby, a fan just blowing across. Once you see all the red coats dried out, you can pull the plugs out of the bungs and you can take the tape off, put a fan over it, and that's gonna help accelerate the curing process. So now, we'll just pull all this tape off. Any excess red coat you can see here around the filler is really easily removed. I'll show you guys. A little bit of acetone comes right off. See that little spot right there? You zoom in real close. There you go. Gone. And now, your tank is ready to paint. Here at TJ Brutal Customs, we put all our products through a FAFO test. That's the fuck around and find out test. And as you can see with this gas tank, we really gave it the works. You know, we, we tried our best to fuck this shit up pretty good. And if you look at the bottom, there's not a single leak. Well, that's, that's a bung. Let me drain some of this water out here. Oh, there we go. Oh yeah. So if you look at the bottom of the tank, there's no leaks. No water has come out of the seam. And you can see what we did to this beat the shit out of it, and it survived. So, if you wanna buy shitty Chinese parts, go for it. Or you can buy TG Brutal Customs parts where we offer you a lifetime warranty. I stand behind the shit that I offer you. I don't recommend you do this to your gas tank because maybe that's the look you're going for. I don't fucking know, what is that look? I don't give a fuck. Doing this will greatly reduce your fuel capacity for sure, but just know that the parts you get from us are durable as fuck. Solid as a cock. You guys found this video useful? Let me know in the comments of whatever videos you like to see. If you wanna see me do some other stupid shit, tell me about it. If you have ever poked your friend in the ass and become slightly aroused, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button and we'll catch you guys later. Do fun shit.